you are filling in the circles, the squares, and um, triangles with the same, it, whatever the shape is, it has to be the same number. So I started here with a triangle because two of the same number has to equal six. So I would put in a three. So the triangle equals three. Then I go find another triangle and I put the three in for that triangle. So three plus what gives me five? Two. So my circle has to equal two. So then I put my two up here in this other circle. So then what plus two equals 10? Eight. So then my square has to equal eight. Same set up as the problem to the left, fill in the blanks. So the set up to the problem to the left was what adds to be the bottom number, but also multiplies to be the top. So these two had to multiply to get to the top, these two added to get to the bottom. So I'm working here with these numbers. So I've got a number up here is 43 times something, and 43 plus something equals 61. You cannot start with the multiplication because these are going to be a lot bigger numbers. So I would start by doing the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So I'm going to take my 61 minus 43. 6 becomes a 5, 1 becomes an 11, and 11 minus 3 is 18. Okay, and then we just finished it. Okay, 18. So I know 18 goes here. Then I should take 43 times 18. 8 times 3? 24. 24. 8 times 4? 32. 32 plus 2? 34. Cross off what you've used, add a 0. 1 times 3? 1 times 4? 4. Add them up. 774 is your final answer. Number three is a multi-step problem. It takes more than one step to solve the problem. So it's one of those that you wanted to read more than once. A farmer has 113 sheep. Go that way. 47 of them are male. How many more female sheep are there than male sheep? So first I know there's a total of 113 sheep. 47 are male. So I have to figure out how many females there are first. So I'm going to do 113 minus 47. Cannot take three minus seven, so the one becomes a zero, this becomes a 13. 13 minus seven. Six. Six. Thank you. 10 minus four. Six. Six. So now I know there's 66 females, but that's not my answer. Because it says how many more female sheep are there than male sheep. So I'm comparing the females and the males. So I needed to take my 66 and subtract it. Yeah. Thank you. 66 minus 47. Six becomes a five, this becomes a 16. 16 minus seven is? And five minus four is? So your final answer is 19. A lot of people want to stop at the 66. Yeah. Number four, you're looking at this thermometer. The first thing you need to do is figure out how much each tick mark is worth. Okay? So if I start at zero and I need to work my way up to 25. If I go by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. Well, that's not gonna work. So five, oops, sorry, I need to start my zero. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So each tick mark is worth five, five points or five degrees. So it's five, 10, 15. So the highest temp here is 15 degrees. Then five, 10, 15. The lowest temp is a negative 15 degrees. I need this, all I had to do was count the tick marks between the highest temperature and the lowest temperature. So I would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that's your answer. Now, 
Let's look at this word. Difference. What's the difference in the highest to lowest? So now we're on our line paper because we're going to do this also on our line paper. And the highest temperatures we said was 15. When I see the word difference, what does it mean to do? Subtract. Subtract. So I'm going to do 15 minus, and the lowest temperature was a negative 15. And then we are going to remember keep, change, change. And you're going to write that down. Keep, change, change. So I'm going to keep the positive. Change subtraction to addition. Change whatever this sign is to the opposite sign. So this is a negative, so I'm going to change it to a positive. So then I just do addition of integers, which is 15 plus 15. So my final answer is still 30. 30. It's good to see Dave, like, before this, he did that thing yeah. on here. Just if I can get on the wall, he said, A submarine dove 35 feet per hour for seven hours. How deep is a submarine if it originally, am I not on there? If it originally started at 107 feet below sea level. Okay, so I dove 35 feet per hour for seven hours. That per hour, I know, like I've done the last few weeks, I'm setting up a um, ratio. So I write, 35, I just keep getting off the screen today. 35 feet per one hour. And it says, I did it for seven hours. Remember, feet have to stay with feet. Hours need to stay with hours. So my seven hours is on the bottom. This is my X. I don't know that. So I'm going to cross multiply 35 times 7. 7 times 5? What's 7 times 5? 35. 35. 7 times 3? 21 plus 3 makes 40. Okay. So now that's 245 feet. But now let's go back to the story problem because this is another multi-step story problem. Because then it says um, how deep is a submarine if it originally started at 170, at 107 feet below sea level? So if I started at 107, I'm going to add my 245. So 7 plus 5 is? 12. Leave the 2, carry the 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. And one plus two is three. three. Now, and what we're going to learn and what's going to carry over in today's lesson, they said that was below sea level. So it's really not a positive number. What would it be? Negative. Excellent. So we're just going to put that in there. No. Find the volume of the cube. How do you find volume? Length times width times height. Say that. How do you find volume? Length times width times height. Okay. And the length of the cube, if it's a cube, all the sides, the length and the width and the height, they're all the same, correct? Okay. So I would need to do 8 and 1 eighth times 8 and 1 eighth times 8 and 1 eighth. We know when we're multiplying mixed numbers, we have to change the mixed number to a improper fraction. So 8 times 8 is 64, 64 plus 1 makes 65 over 8. So it's 65 over 8. Oh, I'm going to make this into two lines. So I have 65 over 8 times 65 over 8 times 65 over 8. So we would know, we just need to multiply now my numerator. 65 times 65, that answer times 65. And if you do that, you get, I'm just going to give you the answer, 274,625.
That's a big number, but it's something that you guys can multiply. And I do eight times eight, which is 64, then 64 times another eight. I'm gonna give you that answer, 512. Would we leave our answer like this? No. No, no. what do we do? Divide. Divide. You divide. Whenever you see this symbol, or fraction symbol is always division. So after I do that in my calculator, I get 536 and 376 thousandths. And I'll just round it to the nearest tenth. And there is your volume. Number seven. John has to pay $7.50 admission for the skating rink and a hundred one dollar and fifty cents per hour when i say when i see per it's either going to be my i'm going to multiply or going to divide <coughs> to rent rollerblades write an equation for the cost y based on the number of hours x so i don't know how many hours he's there so y equals what's my base amount just, just to get in the door seven dollars and fifty cents and it says plus, because we have to add $1.50 per hour. So it would be $1.50 times X, because my X is my number of hours. And that's all I had to do. All I had to do was write the equation. I didn't need to solve it or anything. Number eight is an equation that you need to solve. Now, I want you writing this down step by step, line for line, the way I do it, because they are going to get harder. First thing that you can do, you can look at this and you can at least write it down your line paper and you can't say, I don't know what I'm doing, right? Write it, write it down. Then the second thing you can all do, put a line through that equal sign, because we're balancing it. The third thing you can do is find your variable and put a box around it and say, whoa, hey, you're staying over here for now, dude. You're not moving. So everybody can at least do those three steps in solving an equation. So now I boxed my X and said, he's staying put. Who do I move? I move the eight. When I go across that equal sign, which is like a, that magical place, what do I do to the opposite? And well, you add the eight. Yeah. And I do it to both sides. Put an equal sign. Gribble out your eight. What's 19 plus eight? 27. 27. Bring down what we didn't move. So that was X divided by two. Gonna put a box now just around the X. Cause he's not moving, yep. I'm right now I'm dividing by two. I want to get that two across that equal sign. So what do I have to do? Multiply by two. Because now these cross each other out and if I multiply by two on one side, I multiply by two on the other side. X is still now the only thing left over here equals and then 27 times two is 54. Now a great part about doing these is you can check your work. So you're all gonna do this also on your line paper. You're gonna put a check mark, because we're checking. You check by going to the original problem. So we're gonna write, rewrite the original problem. X divided by two minus eight equals 19. We think X is 54. So you put 54 in where X is. So I take 54 divided by two minus eight equals 19. Well, let's do the problem now then. What's 54 divided by two? So I have now I have 27 minus eight. What's 27 minus eight? Am I correct? Yes. So X equals 54. Take a picture of your work, submit.